Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Daily Word, Monday, April the 5th, the day after Easter. And this is a, a day of, of recovery and thinking about what we just experienced on Resurrection Sunday. It's a beautiful day. Uh, spring is really in the midst of our lives today. When the sun is shining, it's going to be warm today and, and the grass is greening up. I was outside earlier in the churchyard and things are are certainly greening up as we move along. So thanks for joining me uh, for a few minutes together this day as we continue to think about the resurrection and what it means for us and uh, the celebration of Easter these days going forward. So yesterday, um, because in the season of, of Lent we have been in the Gospel of Mark and continued um, Mark's Gospel, even though Mark is very quick and succinct and to the point. Even yesterday's scripture, you know, as Mark's, Mark recounts the gospel and the resurrection, we only get eight verses from that. And the last words of that is that the women were afraid as they left the empty tomb. Now, afraid makes a lot of sense um, because there's such a lack of understanding about what must have happened. Um, there... The idea that they saw the crucifixion, the idea that they saw that there was this huge stone rolled in front of the tomb. And then when they arrived there, just after sunrise, this huge stone is rolled away. And of course, Jesus isn't there. And the young man sitting at the right side says to them, look, Jesus isn't here. Go, tell the disciples that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, just like he told you. And the last words of that are trembling and bewildered. The women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now I, I read somewhere early this morning, really early this morning, someone talking about that, that text and thinking that, well, the women never told anybody. I don't, I don't read it like that. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. I take that as being immediately I think eventually when their fears subsided and they had a, a conversation between the three of them and processed it, you had to know that they went and finally told somebody. Well, this morning I want to read to you from the Gospel of John, John's account, just these couple of verses. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned to him in Hebrew and said, Rabboni. Mary Magdalene went and announced to his disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said these things to her. John 20, verses 16 through 18. So there is this mystery that surrounds us about Easter, that we now call Easter, and the resurrection. You know, it's interesting that I read also yesterday, um, last night when I was working on some things, preparing for the new week, that the gospel writers were less concerned about the how of the resurrection, and we're more, con more concerned about the what about and what does it mean for us. And I, I love how that puts this in context for us. They weren't concerned about the how, but they were concerned about the what about. And so we hear these four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all agree, you know, that Jesus died, but then they have different ideas about what happened afterwards. Like we talked about, you know, Mark has the empty tomb conversation and the women were afraid. Matthew and Luke were a bit more optimistic in this, that Jesus was alive and walking and talking. John, if you read the gospel of John, John has the most to say about the resurrection. From John, you know, we get to hear about Thomas who um, says, I won't believe unless I see his hands in his side. We hear John that talks about some of my favorite post-resurrection stories, you know, uh, the road to Emmaus. We hear um, breakfast on the beach that Jesus then reveals himself to them. So there are these different endings that happen as we read the Gospels. But it's interesting that, that maybe we have these different endings because, well, scholars believe that Mark was the first Gospel written and that the other gospel writers kind of fashioned theirs after him. But these gospels were written to communities specifically. 
And every community had their own struggles and their own ideas about, about where they were in life. And the gospel writers knew that what they needed to hear at that time was what they wrote. They needed hope. Not even, not even a precise hope that they could pin their, their lives on, but just hope. And, you know, we, we too know about what needing hope means Life can be difficult, and we struggle with the idea you know, of what it means to have hope. Um, sometimes our Good Fridays last lo a lot longer than they should. Here's what we do know. This gives me hope on this Easter Monday morning. The Gospel writers didn't care that their Easter endings were different. They, they didn't, you know, care that they sounded different or even looked different. They borrowed from each other. But the interesting thing is, for us, they weren't trying to write about endings. They were writing about beginnings. Because the resurrection stories aren't about the end. They're really about beginnings. And the beginning of new life then. It was the beginning of of the resurrected Jesus, then meeting his followers where they were and then offering them new life. Indeed, telling them to go ahead, go to Galilee and I'll meet you there. Uh, meeting them along the road in their life. The disciples, some of them had gone back to fishing and Jesus met them on the road. Two of them were making their way to Emmaus and Jesus walked with them. And when he left them, you know, re you recount the story, right? Jesus said, or, or the disciples said, Weren't our hearts burning within us? They finally realized who it was. Even, even the disciples locked in the upper room. These are about beginnings in their life. That now suddenly their life took on new meaning. And it leads them all the way to Pentecost, which is not until towards the end of May. But Jesus continues to meet them where they are and can, then shapes their lives again and prepares them for what's next in life. And that's true for us in the Easter story, you know, that this isn't all tidied up for us, but it's an invitation for us to look past the fears and the worries and the distraught things in our life and to look ahead and to know that Jesus meets us ahead in our life. Our story is not over. The gospel story is not over. We, you and I, are resurrection in progress. We are still becoming and coming and becoming again and again and again. We'll always have Good Fridays in our lives. Always. But Easter, Easter, resurrection, always arrives in our midst. And you know... Today, um, today's Monday, it's the day after Easter. I'm always tired on this day, a little less so because we didn't have sunrise and breakfast. Hopefully next year we'll have that. And, you know, there's a lot of unknowns about where we are this day after, but it's a reminder that, that today new life breaks out and the resurrection is a beginning story for you and for me and how we're gonna live our lives. And so I hope that, that as we think about Easter and what it means to celebrate the good news of the resurrection, um, that we'll know that this is a beginning story and that the Jesus of the resurrection and the Jesus of Easter continues to shape our lives and, and move in us and to offer us hope. And so that's the good news, I think, for us that you know, in these difficult days that we live in, wherever we are, a little bit of hope about this is a beginning can make a big difference in our life. And so I pray you'll enjoy the beauty of this day. I pray you'll, I pray you'll hear the continued echoes of the resurrection um, in the midst of your lives and then share that with others. Um, and then just continue to recount this story knowing that the resurrection is a beginning for all of us. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, know a piece that the disciples knew when they were so afraid, and I don't blame them, and I don't blame the women at the end of Mark. They were so afraid. Um, they locked themselves, and they didn't tell anyone 
Um, but Jesus appeared and offered them peace. That's the good news, just peace. Nothing else, no judgment, no condemnation, just peace. So I pray we'll know that kind of peace today and that we'll know God's love and grace and mercy in our lives and that um, we'll share that with each other. So may God's love surround you and may you know of my love for all of you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.